The second part of the applications of integration, we're still looking at finding volumes. We will be looking at an example of finding a volume you're slicing and then at using a formula if we're given functions to find volumes of solids of revolution. So let's look at the sphere. When given the sphere, we're given a sphere, it's got a constant radius, R all over. Let's place that on the Cartesian plane. There's our sphere. Now our formula tells us the volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. So let's see if we can use calculus to confirm this. We should, but let us see what our process is going to be. All right, so if we take a slice, if we slice there at x, our area of our slice, firstly the shape is going to be a circle no matter where you slice it, but the size is changing. Now what we want to know is what is the radius of this slice in terms of what I have. So I've got the radius r of my sphere. Here at x, let me redraw that radius so it's in the right place for my example. There's my radius r. This is x. What I want to know is what is the radius of my new circle? Now where do I find the radius of the circle? Well, it's the distance from there to there. So this is the distance we're looking for. Here I've got x, there I've got r, so that distance has to be the square root of r squared minus x squared. Thank you to Pythagoras. So that's the radius of my circle. So the area of this slice is going to be pi times r squared minus x squared square root squared pi radius squared. So my volume is going to be the integral from naught no, not from naught, we're looking at this whole sphere, so it starts at minus r all the way to r. From minus r to r of pi times, well, of the area of the slice, which is pi times root of r squared minus x squared all squared just gives me r squared minus x squared dx. So that gives me the integral from minus r to r, I can take pi out, and I have r squared minus x squared dx. So the antiderivative, then I've got pi times r squared x minus a third x cubed, everything between r and minus r. And now we're simply substituting, so we've got pi times Substitute r in, and I've got r cubed minus a third r cubed minus, substitute minus r in, and I've got minus r cubed plus a third r cubed. And all of that will get us to 4 r, 4 over 3. Pi r cubed, which is where we want it to get. So you can just check the calculation. We've got 2r minus 2 over 3. That it gives us 4 over 3 r cubed times the pi. So that is determining the volume by slicing. Now, like I said, you can do that with a cone. You can do it with a rectangular prism. You can do it with a tetrahedron. That one's a little bit challenging, but it is possible. But now we're going to move on to see what happens if I've got a function. Because the process stays the same. So, if I've got a graph of f of x, and I take this, and I rotate it about the x-axis, and I get a solid, as given here. This solid of revolution, to find its volume, we're going to use the same process. The volume, if we just look at a slice, the slice is always going to be a circle. Because we're rotating, so I'm always going to have a circle. So the area of this slice is always going to be pi r squared. Now, pi is a constant. What is r? r is the radius from my x-axis to the top of the slice. But that top of the slice is every time is the y value. So that is just pi times f of x squared for the various x values. So my volume for a solid of revolution is going to be the integral from a to b, wherever I start to where I end, the x values, 
of pi times my function squared dx. So you can see where the formula for the volume of a solid of a revolution comes from. We're looking at the area of the slice, and that's where we get it from. Right now, to formalize it, f has to be a continuous and non-negative function. There's some other information, but that's how what the formula looks like. All right, so let's apply this on two examples. Let's start with e to the power x, a lovely function. We want the region bounded by the curve between minus 1 and 1. We're taking this whole area, and what are we doing with it? We're rotating it around the x-axis, so we get a solid, and we want the volume of this solid if I rotate this function around the x-axis. So if we're using our formula, we should get the volume is the integral from minus 1 to 1 of pi times my function squared. So that is pi can come out. That's minus 1 to 1, e to the power 2x dx. Now you should, at this stage, know how to find the antiderivative e to the power 2x. That's pi times a half e to the power 2x between 1 and minus 1. So that's pi times, if I substitute 1 in, I've got a half e squared minus a half e to the power minus 2. You can rewrite this as pi over 2 e squared minus e to the power minus 2, but we don't need to take it any further. That's the exact value of the volume of that revolution. Next one, if I've got y equal to sine x between 0 and pi, now that's what sine x looks like, here's 0, there's pi, 1. So we want to take this shape and rotate it about the x-axis. Then we're going to get a solid and we're trying to find its volume. Well, we now know to find the volume is the integral from where I start to where I end, nor to pi, of pi times the function squared. Right, now, finding the antiderivative of sine squared, if you have not seen it before, I will just write something here on the side to show you what we're going to do. We've got the double angle formulas of cos of 2x has got three versions. One of them, it's 1 minus 2 sine squared x. We can make sine squared x a subject of this formula, and that will be a half... 1 minus cos of 2x. Now this is just a double angle formula that comes from when you started with trigonometry. We're going to replace sine squared x with what we've got there on the right hand side. Why? Because it's easier to integrate. I take pi out, I've got 0 to pi of a half 1 minus cos 2x dx. The half can also come out, it's pi over 2. Now the antiderivative of 1 is just x minus the antiderivative of cos of 2x is nearly sine of 2x, but I must still accommodate the 2, so it's a half sine of 2x. And my sine is right, the derivative of sine is co positive cos, so minus sine is minus cos. So there we go. That everything between pi and 0, now it's just substitution. So we've got pi over 2 times pi. Sine of 2 pi gives me 0. When x is 0, I get 0, and sine of 0 is 0. So there's just a whole lot of zeros. So we get pi squared over 2 is the volume of this sh shape if it's rotated about the x-axis. Now, I'm not focusing on units here, but we're talking about volume, so it's whatever my unit is cubed. I'm more focused on the calculation. Now, everything we're doing with respect to x, we can do with respect to y. We can take this shape and rotate it about the y-axis if I've got a function that's defined in terms of y. So we can do the same and rotate it about the y-axis. It's the similar idea, so I'm not going to do examples of that, just to show you. 